Welcome to DIY Music Movement. My name is Josh Liston and today we're going to be having a quick look at the seven fan care factors. Uh, after going to a major festival the other day and seeing a lot of great fan interaction and fan caring from some bands and then uh, some actually some pretty unfortunate events unfolding during the sets of some other bands. Um, firstly, I'm not going to be placing any blame on any of the bands that did or did not handle those situations well. It's nothing to do with them in particular. It just got me thinking about the more general idea of how a band can show that they care for their fans across the board. So although the inspiration from this post is a little bit uh, tragic, hopefully uh, things like that won't happen again. And if uh, your band keeps a few of these things in mind, maybe you can avoid ever having anything, uh, anyone get hurt or uh, upset or unhappy at uh, one of your shows. So we'll get through this quickly as this is just a video to uh, accentuate the blog post that this goes along with. So uh, we'll move on. So it's Josh from DIYMusicMovement.com and these are the seven fan care factors. Uh, number one, bands that care make the time. So what exactly does this mean? Essentially, it means that they take the time to uh, speak with their fans, hang out with their fans, take extra time to take them through their merchandise, uh, get to shows early, make sure that they're around. After the show, I've seen some huge bands stay until the very end of uh, enormous concerts signing uh, autographs and those types of things down the front until every single fan had left the building. That's what I mean by bands uh, Bands that care make the time. They put, they will even uh, put off their own schedule to make sure that they've talked to or uh, entertained their fans one-on-one -on -one in person, wherever they can. So uh, if you are thinking how to uh, scale your band quickly, then uh, just make a little bit of extra time before and after each show, and I'm sure that would be a good start. The other thing is making extra time online to uh, actually comment back to all the people that interact with your posts on Facebook and Twitter and all those sorts of things. So just that little bit of extra time will be really appreciated by your core fans. Number two, the fan experience is paramount. So this means to bands that care essentially that the happiness, safety and uh, general experience and vibe of particularly their live experience and their online experience these days is... Uh, one where they're aiming for the fan to be as happy as possible and as safe as possible and the band is actually hyper aware at any one time of the real time events that are happening whether that's uh, someone's fallen over in your mosh pit and you have to stop the show or you see a particular person bullying someone on your uh, Facebook feed about a, a particular post those are the types of things that I mean when I say the fan experience is paramount a, a good band, a caring band will ensure that everyone's happy as much of the time as possible and everyone's safe in the live environment and online. Number three, the caring band is ready to engage in real time. Uh, this means essentially that leading on from the last post, that uh, which was the fan experience is paramount, the bands don't let time pass before they reach out to help fans. They are uh, won't worry about what people say if they do have to stop a show, whether they think that their audience might find them uh, to be wusses or whatever. They'll actually do it. It's paramount that it happens at the time. If they see something bad happening online to one of their fans or in person at a show, they'll make sure that they deal with it on the spot, even to the detriment of maybe the uh, visual or interactive experience for other users that may, may not be directly affected. The band puts uh, the individual first. And does that in real time. Our caring bands scale their effort towards their fans. Essentially what this means, this is a quick one, that uh, unlike a band that gets bigger and bigger and starts to uh, care less and less about the individual fan or small groups of core fans, a caring band, in 2013 caring band could also be substituted for a successful band, makes every effort to uh, scale the amount of effort they put in, in line with the success that they're seeing as a band. So the bigger and bigger they get, the more and more they reach out to fans and care for them even more deeply as they grow. So the entire community grows together. Number five, caring bands are both inclusive and exclusive. So this isn't a, uh, a nasty one or a negative. Uh, there's no negative connotation to this. Basically what that means is that caring bands are inclusive of everyone in their community. They'll bring people into a conversation at a show. They won't ignore anybody. They'll uh, invite people into the actual experience live by speaking to the crowd, all those types of things. And by exclusive, I don't mean that they're exclusive in a snobby way or an elitist way. I just mean that 
everything else is uh, subservient to the fan experience as a whole. So whether that's the opinions of radio, the media, or a critic, or uh, a certain group of fans that may be a little bit more aggressive and putting everybody down in your community, a caring ban will be exclu exclusive, meaning that they actually will leave out people that they don't want to be involved with their fans or don't want their fans to have to interact with for some reason. And uh, that's an important one. You can't be everyone to everything sorry to everyone. You should always try to be as inclusive of your core fan audience as possible. Welcome newcomers to that audience and positive influences and just not really care so much about anyone else that doesn't have a direct effect on your community, whether that's the radio or the media or uh, magazines or anything like that. I'm not saying that you should uh, completely avoid them. I'm just saying that they're not as important as your fans, so always remember that. A caring band will do for one that which they could do for many. So essentially what this means is as your band grows, you can't actually spend physical one-on-one -on -one time with every single fan the way you might have been able to when you're a smaller band or had a smaller fan base. So the way that a lot of bigger bands do this to show that they do care for their community deeply is to create amazing individual experiences for a single fan or for a single group of fans. These fans are varied over time. It's not the same people all the time. But they're creating individual one-off experiences for certain groups of fans at certain times and showing that they're greater fan base that if they could do it for everybody they would but it's just not feasible so and a, a general rule is that if a fan sees you're doing something amazing for another fan and they believe that it's coming from the goodness of your heart they'll take that on board as something that they believe you would do for them if you had the chance so just remember to do for one that which you wish you could do for many Okay, finally, this is probably the most important one, and if you were to ignore all other uh, seven factors and just do one, this is probably the uh, one you would want to do, and that's caring bands say thank you more often, even sometimes to the point where it's, it feels like they're saying it uh, too often, sometimes in the live environment. But uh, there's uh, no amount of thank yous that are too much, in my opinion. Thank you, fans. Thank you, uh, community. Thank your professional network. Thank the other bands that you tour with. Thank anybody that's either lent your gear or endorsed your band as often as you can. Reach out to people, write them notes, send a random email or a tweet just randomly thanking someone. Uh, make an effort and obviously in the live environment, make sure that you do thank people several times during the show for turning up, for buying merchandise and for supporting you as a band and also the greater uh, music community. Rightio, so that's the end of my video. It's uh, on Twitter at Josh DIY Music, Facebook. Well, that says Factbook. That's uh, an interesting one. We'll just have to move on. Factbook.com slash DIYMM. Obviously, that's meant to be Facebook. I should have uh, checked this a bit more closely. I apologize for that. And uh, DIYMusicMovement.com is my website. And that has a link to the podcast on there as well, which can be found and subscribed to and rated in iTunes if you would like to do that. And uh, yeah, as I said before, uh, thank you very much for watching. And I hope you have a fantastic day.